Uh, how many of you are under 30? Okay. So I guess everybody else is over 30. So it looks <laughs> like about more or less 50-50. How many of you are college students? Okay. Uh, grad students? Okay. Um, and people who have jobs of one kind or another, or who are unemployed. Okay. So it's a kind of mix of people. All right. Um, this is a teach-in, so um, I will uh, try to pretend to be a teacher, which I was for a long time, uh, but have quit doing so that I could uh, do other things, uh, mainly write. Um, but um, I should also say that in movements um, like what, like the occupation movements, um, it's my sense uh, is uh, that people don't learn so much from each other in the movement as they do from uh, the people um, for whom uh, they're trying to act. Um, and there's a complicated um, struggle uh, and tension, uh, usually, uh, between them in these kinds of movements. But uh, I'm still uh, going to try to uh, be something of a teacher here. Um, the title, uh, it says here, is Vigilance, Inquiry, Alienation, and Hope. Um, and those are more or less, mostly, the words that uh, I uh, kind of offhand sent for a title, but there's some of them. Um, uh, somewhat more, um, uh, what shall I say, academic uh, than I had put them. Uh, the way I would try to, what, what I'm going to try to say tonight is really under about five points. Um, one, instead of vigilance, really something as simple as, but also complicated and harder, uh, paying attention. That is, uh, in the mess of things that we learn and read, it takes a, a lot of work to pay attention uh, to what's going on. Um, especially, I should say, because part of the title of this thing is at Harvard um, and in the USA. Uh, at Harvard, uh, there's the emblem, Veritas, uh, but if you pay attention uh, to what it does, uh, not to what it says or the term it adopted, it's much more like cupiditas um, or uh, gloria uh, or opulentia or a word I learned early in doing what I tried to teach for some time, uh, not veritas, but mentiras, uh, lies. Um, you, it, it's not often, it's, it's not conscious mendacity. Uh, it's just the stories that, uh, that often uh, the professors, some of them, uh, with vested interests in their subjects, that is, making money out of what they teach, um, what they tell. Um, let me move on. The, besides vigilance, uh, next uh, is inquiry, but what I had put, and it's also simpler, but uh, somewhat more complicated, is asking questions. Uh, don't just take, for students in particular, but I think the public uh, at large, uh, don't just assume the terms you're given, uh, which is, it seems to me, um, one of the things that's happened uh, through electronic information. Uh, 
somehow the terms of the discourse are swallowed. Um, public itself, uh, for instance, it's worth ponder asking what that actually means in any context and in any speech or delivery. Um, another uh, uh, definition uh, of it, I, somebody once asked William Haywood, one of the founders of the Industrial Workers of the World, uh, what he thought the public would make of his outrageous statements. And he said, to hell with the public. The public is just the chamber of commerce. Um, the, it hasn't in some way changed that much uh, in many uh, circles. Um, it, in the New York Times, the public usually means uh, the powers, financial uh, and real estate, uh, in uh, New York City. Um, so it's important, I think, and uh, it's not just inquiry, which sounds objective and th there are ivory towers where that happens. Um, but this is asking questions. And what are the people? Uh, that is a particular uh, I'm not, I won't say trope, uh, because I'm still not sure what that means. I'm too old to uh, have learned it um, when I might have understood it. But it's a term particularly that flows through all of the language uh, of these uh, movements, going back into the 60s and going back from them into the 30s and then into the 1890s and earlier, we the people. Um, who are the people? Uh, we, the people, actually were some mostly very rich guys, uh, at least half of them slave owners, um, men, of course, and white, uh, of course, who were carrying out a coup against the, uh, the established uh, confederation uh, in the United States. So. And now it's not clear who the people are. The people, uh, for as I read anyway, um, uh, being addressed and assumed uh, are not the kind of people uh, you see if you get outside uh, the circles uh, of the demonstration, uh, as anybody who's been in these demonstrations can testify. Uh, there's a lot of hostility uh, to it. Um, so it's important to think through these things. You can say what you please in public, uh, out loud, uh, to whomever you want, uh, for whatever political purposes uh, you uh, have uh, in mind. Uh, but it's important, at least in your own minds, uh, involved in these movements, to be clear about what you yourself are assuming, uh, what you hope, and, and uh, what you can actually tell uh, is there. Thinking also, uh, it, you keep thinking through a lot of the, the, the assumptions uh, in these movements. Um, they are not, uh, the, the assumptions and it's a, there's a kind of dialectic, of course, between asking questions uh, of, of whatever the language and the premises uh, of a movement are, but it's also important to keep thinking about them um, uh, in back and forth between questions and thinking. What it says, well, thinking got left out of the abbreviated title, but that, it, uh, that may be the most important uh, part of this. I, maybe not, but let me say what I, one example. Um, race, for example, uh, particularly uh, in its academic representations um, in the United States and its representations for most of the educated public, that is, the people like you, who uh, probably 
all or almost all of you uh, been through some uh, serious education. We assume uh, that we who, white man, but uh, we assume a race is a matter of color. Um, and that's what most people uh, seem to, uh, to mean by it. But there are other older uh, terms for this, and they seem to me, at least, to be resurfacing uh, in a lot of the uh, assumptions that at universities in general. Um, and more broadly, uh, we're asked to, uh, to accept. Um, race, even the Nazis got it this way, they're not necessarily by color, they're by higher and lower. Um, so that uh, in the um, sort for now uh, distant past, uh, there were the, um, the, the superior races. Uh, and the inferior races. We learn the same thing uh, all over again now in terms of testing uh, and IQs. You're born with it, not necessarily because of your color uh, or other physical uh, at, uh, attributes, uh, but by where you show up so that there are uh, superiors uh, and inferiors. So that this whole business about race in the United States and its part um, in the formation of the 99% is less probably, in that sense, the post-racist notion, uh, as uh, foolish as it is, ha does have a point uh, that we now define race in terms of uh, superior. Uh, by performance, uh, according to uh, the standards of cupiditas. Um, and by testing, by wealth, you can tell who's superior uh, and who's not. So it takes, I think, some continual dialectical connection between asking questions inside these movements, uh, but also of the people you're trying to work for. It, I, I, it, there's an interesting article uh, in New York Magazine about uh, the Occupy Wall Street, and there are a lot of uh, good articles about it and uh, the movements uh, in other cities, Boston and, and um, Seattle uh, and so on. Uh, they often um, make the point that they are, that the people in this movement are not trying to do things for people, but with people, from within the 99%. Yes, that's absolutely true, but uh, that 99% is not simply uh, all of it. Uh, not much of it uh, is, at, uh, is, is in movement yet. Uh, it may be in the spring. It may be drawn into uh, movement uh, in the spring. Um, but it's important within this movement and in dealing with people whom you hope to move um, to, to keep asking them especially what they make of these uh, questions. It's, I think, in that way, uh, it really, uh, it don't, if you're in this, don't l try to learn from professors. Uh, don't try to, uh, there are things you can learn from them, of course. Uh, things you can also mislearn from them. Uh, but it's most important to try to learn from the people you are trying to work with. They will, for all of uh, the interesting things Todd Gitlin uh, has written, you'd be much more better advised, I think, uh, to try to find out what Fred Hampton, uh, who was murdered, um, what now, 40, um, uh, it's hard to remember, over four decades ago uh, on a December 4th uh, by the Chicago police. 
uh, he organized, uh, or was one of the key organizers in the first Rainbow Coalition uh, in Chicago. It's much, and he, organ he and the people who organized that with him made it out of their own street struggles. Uh, they have lessons uh, from their lives. They weren't professors. They didn't write books and articles or uh, get interviewed in the New York Review of Books. Um, they uh, were teaching other people and learning from the people they were working with. So try to, if this is about the 99%, deal with them uh, from the inside and not just the people at the demonstration, at the occupation. Uh, you have to get out um, of uh, a particular place, uh, as some have argued was a blessing. Um, in, uh, in the uh, evacuation uh, in, in New York uh, and in other cities. The alienation, all right. Um, I, it's, it seems to me that that's something to be cherished. Um, it, uh, particularly uh, in this um, country, um, maybe above all in this empire. Um, it's the only way, I think, to keep a sharp, radical uh, perspective uh, on uh, what's going on. Uh, it seems to me alienation is essential, uh, at least as I have come to understand, not just this, you know, well, I think I understand, most of what this university has become um, and uh, what the USA has become. Uh, there's no answer, there's no solution uh, in, uh, the, in US terms. Um, this is a country made of white immigration, native massacres, uh, black slavery, and capitalism. How in hell can you ref go back to its roots, its origins, and make anything of this? Um, I'm not saying that you can't uh, do, you can't make th some things better along the way. That's obviously the case. Things did get better off and on, here and there. Um, but um, what happens uh, is that and it, those things that were thought of, worked for, struggled for, accomplished, wind up sooner or later uh, in this system sinking um, or um, uh, dissolving. Um, it takes a lifetime struggle uh, to keep these things uh, going. Uh, you cannot assume, then, uh, that within the terms of U.S. institutions, as they have developed, um, as they uh, are uh, now, uh, that there is any safe, uh, established resolution uh, to anything. They, I, it, people feel disillusioned now over uh, 2008 elections. Disappointed, uh, that's a, a sort of a, a, a lame word. Uh, it's a lesson all over again. And what happens when people put their, um, their, their, what sh their, their American patriotism uh, at the service uh, of, um, uh, the, well, they, they, they assume their, Amer their American patriotism um, will work, uh, that they vote for a good thing, uh, they get it, then they can go home and wait for it to happen. Uh, that, I, once more, uh, is now uh, proven uh, a false um, course. Um, it, you ha in other words, in alienation, I think it's important to, to cultivate it. Uh, <laughs> 
in order to get, uh, to keep getting any kind of light, even to make things temporarily better. Uh, that's important, but you can't figure out even that, uh, or how to, once what you made better has started to sink or dissolve, you can't figure out what else to do it, unless you take a, a really alienated perspective uh, on this uh, empire. Um, so you need to, I think, outside the box is uh, sort of a lame way to put it, uh, because it's not a box. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it, 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 it keeps figuring out how to suck the life uh, out of whatever uh, good uh, you and others uh, may do. So you have to keep not just you, uh, for the rest of your lives, but um, uh, the people you teach uh, and the younger people uh, they teach uh, will uh, need to keep thinking in these uh, in, in alienated terms. Uh, finally, uh, hope. I meant when I sent it to him, it just had a period at the end, but I meant uh, to put it uh, put a, in, a, in the novel style um, to put a, uh, a question mark in parentheses after hope. Uh, there's all, a, there was the hopey changey thing. Um, and how did that work? Um, and uh, I, but there are, it seems to me, there are different kinds of hopes. Um, there, and they work in different ways. Uh, I don't mean here, um, the kind of hope uh, that uh, is what faith gives substance uh, to. But the ho kind of hope um, that, that I is what you discover you have when you've defeated fear. Um, it is, uh, it's actually, you then see that it comes that hope uh, from not so much from a kind of uh, faith, uh, but from a commitment. Uh, there has to be some faith in a commitment, uh, a trust. Um, but the, the commitment uh, is a matter uh, of action. Um, I, I don't want to, we have to be out of here at eight, uh, and um, I. There are two um, Harvard authors I would uh, cite here at the end. Um, one, uh, an interesting guy uh, who went to his reward lately, uh, Professor uh, Samuel Huntington, a uh, very interesting guy. Uh, he, his first, his thesis, um, his, uh, his PhD thesis here, um, which, uh, anyway, uh, and his first article uh, was about how uh, all these good agencies that uh, good-minded American publicly devoted uh, people uh, put together, they all sooner or later uh, get consumed uh, by the people they're supposed to be overseeing. Uh, they, get, they get bought off. Uh, it, it was a remarkable thing for me to read that by him. Uh, but it makes some of the point that I've been trying to make here, that you can't just assume that some reform is going to settle it. Uh, it sinks or is bought uh, or looks for a buyer in order to, to keep it, its piece of the budget. Uh, the other author, uh, in regard to matters of hope uh, and commitment, um, uh, is a very different kind of guy, uh, who also got a Harvard PhD, uh, W.B. Du Bois. Uh, and I would uh, recommend highly um, his uh, biography of John Brown. Uh, it's one of the most, by now I'm an old man, 
Uh, but I should say that, uh, and I've read a fair number of inspiring books uh, in my conscious life. And uh, this I read only about 10 years ago. But it was one of the most illuminating. Uh, um, it's a complicated book. You'll see uh, if you read it. It's illuminating like lightning uh, out of a really ugly storm. Uh, and um, it says something about the risks uh, of hope and the risks of commitment, and also, I think, of a really uh, radical uh, take uh, on uh, the society that, uh, that he lived in, Brown, uh, that Du Bois lived in, uh, and a not so different, after all, society uh, that, that we live in. We've got a minute to get out of here. Uh, thank you.